What is up, guys? It's Blades Gaming here, and I am back with some more Pokemon. And uh, as you guys can tell by the the overlay I have there, uh, this is going to be a Nuzlocke. Now, this is the first Nuzlocke I've ever attempted to do on screen on like for my channel. Um, it's going to be pretty interesting for this uh, game for the playthrough, just because the wild area and then the selection that we have as well. But for those that don't know what a Pokemon Nuzlocke is, a Nuzlocke is a, is a difficulty challenge that Pokemon trainers or just in general players put on themselves uh, to make the game more, more difficult because, you know, the game seems just to be a little too easy. So the rules for the Nuzlocke are you're only allowed to catch the first wild random encounter on a route. Not only do you have to catch that Pokemon or attempt to catch it because you only get that one attempt, you have to nickname the Pokemon if you catch it. So this helps create a bond, and the only reason you need that bond with that Pokemon is simply because once these Pokemon faint, you can't use them anymore. They're considered dead. So one of the hardest things for Nuzlocke when you do lose a partner is figuring out who you're going to replace that Pokemon with, how they're going to fit into the team, and then just in general, just that grind, that grind to get the Pokemon up to, up to speed with the rest of the team is also annoying. So guys, hope you guys enjoyed this series uh, for the Nuzlocke. You guys responded pretty well to the regular playthrough for Pokemon Sword. And I figured since I got the double pack, I might as well do the Nuzlocke with Shield. I think Shield has the better exclusives. And as many like to debate online, um, Shield has better exclusives, but Sword has the better legendaries. So I guess when it comes to doing all the raids and stuff, people prefer Sword for that. But... We're just going to get into this, guys. Um, I'm most likely trying to figure out if I want to skip just all, like, the, the scene. Because I don't know if some people, this is, like, their first time seeing the Pokemon game or not. I feel like if you want, like, a genuine experience of seeing the playthrough of the Gala region uh, with my first playthrough where I chose Brookie, uh, please do go check out the link. It's uh, I'll pro most likely have it posted below in the description, so you can always go check it out. But... For now, I think I'll just skip all the important stuff and just bring it to when we're at our journey, per se. I know a lot of people really wouldn't care for all the dialogue, because I notice a lot of people have a lot of hate for Hop. <laughs> they feel like he's just another Howie, How, Howie from Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, Sun, Moon, which I feel like he's better, because he actually switched up his team throughout the playthrough, and he was actually uh, trying to achieve greatness by beating out everybody. But that's for another day. I'll probably chime us back in when I get to choose my starter, guys. Alrighty, guys. We are finally here where uh, we get to finally choose our Pokemon. So, one thing I'll say is I enjoyed my time with uh, the Nuzlocke, or not the Nuzlocke, my regular playthrough, my actual first playthrough of Pokemon Sword with Grookey. Grookey was my boy. Grookey was putting in work. You know, he was a, a really good offensive tank. And I feel like the game doesn't have that, that many offensive tanks to really utilize like that for a normal playthrough. Of course, normal playthroughs, like, stats don't really matter like that, but I don't know, I felt like Grookey came in clutch, and also being a grass-type Pokemon, too, helped out a lot, because, uh, there aren't that many good grass Pokemon in the Gala region, so, if you wanted, like, a good grass-type, you'd have to rely on a Pokemon from a previous generation, which I kind of didn't want to do, because they already have, like, some pretty bad grass Pokemon out here, so... Rillaboom was my was my boy. He was my go-to, and he definitely did his thing for my team. So, with that said, I'm not going to be choosing him on this Nuzlocke. Um, instead, I'm going to be choosing the Pokemon based off who I felt like the starters would go best with personality-wise. So I felt like since our character is more cool, calm, and collected, it's only right that we go with Sobble. Yeah, give me Sobble. And then, the Nuzlocke hasn't officially started yet. So, for the Nuzlocke, of course, like I said, you have to nickname all your Pokemon. Uh, since Sobble's a crybaby, I'm going to call... Oh, it's a she. Since she's a crybaby, I'm going to call her Teardrops. 
Um, I feel like that's <laughs> that's very fitting. And so the Nuzlocke won't start until you actually get your um, first Pokeballs. And that won't happen till after um, till after we fight the legendary, uh, the mist of the legendary or its little mirage or whatever. So we're going to get into this first battle with Hop. Hopefully I didn't get a really bad nature on Sobble. I'm really hoping for modest or just something that lowers the physical attack at least. Since uh, Inteleon specializes in its special attack and I think it's speed too. I don't, I won't say he's the fastest out of all of them, but might be the second fastest. I'm not sure. But yeah guys, welcome Teardrops to the team. Ready for Teardrop to be putting in work for us. Uh, I totally forgot to <laughs> turn the cut scenes off or the movie scenes because that's definitely going to eat up some time and I don't want you guys to have to sit through scenes that you've already seen before. Yeah, we built up a little bit of love, my guy. Teardrop and I I'm trying to teach her how not to cry. Yeah, I'm down for a battle, dude. I'm ready to kick your butt, like, ASAP. I think before I even do my first attack, I want to check out a, a Teardrop's uh, nature. I don't want to say I'm going to be really disappointed if it has, like, a bad nature, but I'm pretty sure everybody gets disappointed when they get a Pokemon and it has the wrong nature on it. <laughs> Something that hinders what it's good at. Uh, ah, we have... Are we relaxed? Yep, we're relaxed. So we have slow speed, and then, but we have good physical defense, which I guess isn't too bad, but... I don't know, I guess... Again, I think it's better than at least having the special attack lower because at least I kind of need that for dealing offensive damage. So we're just going to pound away with Teardrop. Teardrop's going to do her thing. At least I hope so. Unless unless they start getting crits with uh, his Score Bunny or I'm slower than Score Bunny and it crits twice. But the Nuzlocke wouldn't be over yet because like I said, I, have, I haven't even gotten Pokeballs yet. So, yeah, I know one thing some people do as well for their Nuzlocke is that they make it so they don't get the option of switching their Pokemon out. Um, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to use that. I, I feel like that it's it's interesting because, of course, it makes the game difficult because you have to like waste a switch out. But I don't know. I've never been really a fan of just having your Pokemon stuck in the battle. Even by anime, they're able to switch out, you know. But all right, we made quick work of his score bunny. Teardrops putting in the works. Crying for our enemies. It's all good, though. Mm. See, it's all it's all fine and dandy to like be going through like all these uh all these fights, dialogue, and all this stuff, but I really want to just, like, start the Nuzlocke off pretty pretty soon for you guys, so I think I'm gonna, I'll be right back as soon as I actually have access to Pokeballs, and we can go for our first encounter, our first random encounter. For those that are wondering how that's gonna work, um, I'm just gonna be going after the exclamation points that pop up in the grass. I'm not gonna go for the Pokemon I can physically see out in the overlay like that, or overland. Um... That way it's more so randomized and I can't just pick who I want for my team. I feel like that'd be cheating. I know some people try their method where they're like, oh, I'm gonna just close my eyes and whatever I run into is what I get. No, that's that's stupid. Don't don't ever do that. That That's probably like the worst thing I ever could have heard somebody say for the Nuzlocke. I'm gonna just close my eyes. Bro, there's literally the feature there that lets you still have a wild random encounter. <laughs> so make it random. <laughs>
Alrighty guys, it looks like we're now back. Um, we get to go talk to our mom to let her know that we're leaving on our journey. About to catch as many as we can because we only get that one random encounter. What's up, mother? Give me my money, give me the Pokeballs. Yeah, 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 you think my Pokemon's cute. Love you too. About to go kick some butt now. Bye. So, one thing that uh, that I will say that I like about 2020 rumors when it comes to Pokemon is people talking about my favorite generation, which just so happens to be Generation 4, you know, everybody knows Generation 4 is typically everybody's most hated generation, actually, which I have no idea why people claim that the Pokemon look ugly, the story is stupid or something, or... Okay, that didn't count as my wild encounter. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're going to run from this. This one was an over an overland Pokemon. Plus, who wants a freaking Squavit? No, Nobody wants a freaking Squavit. There we go. That's our random encounter. That's how we're going to be doing. And I get a freaking Squavit. I was talking all that smack. And they still give me a Squavit. But okay. So, and you're level 2? Ooh. Okay, good thing our physical attack sucks. Um, I was hoping for something better. <laughs> I think there's... I think I would have preferred to have a Wulu over a Squavit. Um, I didn't even check its gender, either. But... Uh, Squavit... Squavit, Squavit, Squavit. What am I going to name you? <laughs> Uh, you're also a, oh, I can call you I can call you Sandy now I'll put your last name in there I'll put a little respect on your name Sandy Cheeks um, Squavit has the ugliest evolution I'll say that and so since I hit this route one and this is my first encounter and I actually count captured it for like the random encounter I can't capture anything else um, what I could do though is I could try to get some more levels well, there's a Caterpie here <laughs> honestly it's my first time running into Caterpie ever in the game um, but I did not know Caterpies spawned here I would have preferred Caterpie honestly over Squavit <laughs> I don't know why I'd prefer the, the Butterfree a weak Butterfree over a tanky squirrel you know but it is what it is, guys. Um, at least we can get... I should have used Water Gun. That's how bad the physical attack is? Is that I can't even take out a big Pokemon with Pound like that? He probably only had like six health left. And we took out like five. <laughs> but uh, before I before I even captured Squabbit, I was talking about Generation 4. You know, one of the most hated generations, I'll say next generation five I think um, whichever generation introduced black and white um, but you know people complained about it but that was one of my favorite starters uh, Turtwig, Chimchar, Piplup Chimchar and Turtwig put in work especially Torterra Torterra really was what started my love for grass Pokemon per se I would say it would be Bulbasaur just because when I first started playing Pokemon Blue I always chose Bulbasaur just cause Nobody ever chose Bulbasaur, you know? So, when I realized how good grass Pokemon were in the game, I kind of just stuck with it. But, Turtwig definitely changed it around and made me appreciate grass Pokemon even more. Especially once becoming Torterra, the grass ground. Simply for the fact that Earthquake was beast as hell to be using. And then Torterra was also beefy. Like, bro, come on. You couldn't, you couldn't tell me Torterra was not a good go-to Pokemon. Even if your rival chose... Uh, chose Chimchar, because back then they actually made your rival choose the Pokemon that would kick your Pokemon's butt. You could still learn Earthquake, and if Torterra was bulky enough, he could take that that hit. I think it was, um, it wasn't Flare Blitz. I don't, I can't remember if it, if Infernape learned Flare Blitz, or it was another fire move that did a lot of damage. Physical. It might have been Fire Punch, Blaze Kick, something. Um, but 
if your Torterra survived that hit and hit him with that earthquake, ooh, it was it was over. So that generation had Torterra, my love for grass Pokemon grew, but it also introduced another dragon type Pokemon that you know, me, I love Dragon Pokemon. Another Dragon Pokemon I feel like a staple now for Pokemon, and which is why they didn't include it, because Garchomp, my boy Garchomp, is beast as hell. It had, like, the best stats around. It was a Dragon Ground type, so it took that times four from Ice Pokemon, but being that it was already speedy, it outspeeds a lot of Pokemon, so it can already get, like, that one-hit KO on Pokemon, and don't let it don't let it boost up, either. If you let, if you let it boost up, it's, it's already game over for you, you know? So, Generation 4 introduced my favorite, like, Grass Starter, my favorite Dragon type, and then it also had, to me, like, the best, the best story all around when it came to the Legendary Pokemon and it came to the evil Pokemon team. Um, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say Plasma, because it was, it was Team Galactic, there we go. Team Galactic came through and... You know, their whole thing was about time and space, distorting it and all that stuff. And I'm a science guy, so anything about science and space will have my attention. So they came through. They were talking about trying to control the Algar Apollo whichever version you got, for Diamond and Pearl. And, you know, did their thing there. The story was really intense for it. Even when they introduced Platinum, Platinum had Giratina. And honestly, Giratina is not my favorite. I'm not a big fan of ghost pokemon per se but it was interesting how they introduced the the it was like it's like a flipped world i'm trying to remember what it was called it's been so long since i played i should probably play that if you guys like this nuzlocke or something i'll probably do a uh either platinum nuzlocke or i'll do diamond pearl nuzlocke not sure which one yet but we can get to that at a later date but i started this whole conversation off with that because I was going to be talking to you guys about how I love the theories that in the year 2020 we should be getting a new Pokemon game and typically what people have seen is that every time that there is um, a new console that introduces a new generation they always make sure that they do a remake of a certain gen and so they did that from uh, the Game Boy to the Game Boy Advanced SP with um fire red and leaf green after they introduced Sinnoh I believe um and so oh dang I should have told told him I've never been here I'm, I'm too busy like telling you guys about this but what they typically did was each generation of the console that came out would come out and they'd also do a remake of the previous game so fire red and leaf green was a remake of uh red and green people be like oh well we have blue well Green was also a version. It was just released in overseas, basically. So, um, with that, people have been talking about, okay, yeah, once we went there, we went to the Nintendo DS. Once we had the Nintendo DS, we got remakes of Heart Gold and Soul Silver, or the remakes of Soul and uh, blah, 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 Gold and Silver. I'm getting all tongue tied here. Um, and we got Heart Gold, Soul Silver, which is actually one of their most popular remakes to date. I think if you even try to find it online there will be some people uh spending maybe people maybe spending like 40 ish dollars on it i'm trying to think of like a look to give my guy to kind of match um sable now sable has like the yellow on him so i guess i'll include that um I kind of feel like, yeah, I feel like yellow kind of goes. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to try to take it more serious with dressing my, my character up. <laughs> I didn't before. Uh, my first playthrough, I think you guys can kind of tell, I was kind of like whatever about what my character wore. So this time I'm going I'm to try to, I'm going to try to do my character some justice. Um, okay, everything I'm kind of not liking. Now I feel like I should have changed my pants up. Yeah, I think I'll change my pants up. <laughs> Pardon the slight delay in the Nuzlocke. 
for me to try to get my guy on point. So. Now we can kind of get into the next area per se. We'll talk about this gym challenge real quick, guys. But yeah, people have been talking about the theory that Diamond and Pearl remakes should be coming out this year for the Switch, which I'm looking forward to because I feel like the world is so immense for Diamond and Pearl that it wouldn't it wouldn't do the game justice not to do the remake on the Switch. Now that we have these type these type of graphics uh, with it, oh, we're at Route Two now. Um, so we can actually catch a second Pokemon, but since we have like these type of graphics and whatnot um, We can we can truly appreciate the game even more. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to playing that game if they do do the remake for it and us You know running around with our rival because we have like the rival that likes to run around it actually gave us a run for our money And the game was the game had lots of hours in it. So it was definitely worth it um so yeah guys, I'm just hoping you guys are as hyped as me if this is actually true. We won't know until later on, but I think maybe later on this month there's supposed to be a Nintendo Direct uh, stream or something going. Let's see what you are. And we got a Blip Bug. Blip Bug is our random encounter, guys. Um, I'm not really sure what... I want to name you're also a girl am I about to have like a team of just like all girls <laughs> I feel like that's what I'm about to have I'm about to just use pound because pound doesn't do that much um, but this definitely works out I have a bug Pokemon that can become that can become a bug psychic type and then not only that but or beetle becomes really tanky well even uh, Dotler becomes tanky actually so I guess that kind of comes in clutch. I would say we, yeah, we actually do cover each other's weakness now with uh, Blip Bug. And Blip Bug, you're going to be called, uh, dang, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of like a, a bug character that was a chick, but I can't really think of one. Um, for now, we'll call you Sheetle the Beetle. <laughs> yeah, Sheetle. And hopefully Sheet will put some work. But guys, I think I'm going to end this video off here. I think next video I'll try to go in more depth with my thoughts on that Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remake theory. If you guys are enjoying it. But with that said, thanks for watching. Make sure you leave a like for the video. It helps out the video a lot. And also subscribe to my channel. Because that helps out the channel a lot. Let's me know that you're enjoying what you see. And if you are already subscribed, hit that notification bell because that way you can stay updated on what I'm bringing to the channel on an uploaded daily basis. So with that said, stay sharp guys. Later.